Julie Pyatt. Rich Roll. Back on the podcast. Thanks for inviting me back on. We're long overdue for a conversation. Well, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> I've, I've been wondering when you were going to invite me back. No, I'm kidding. Really well, we've been sharing conversations from our retreats. That's true. Uh, so you've made appearances on the show in that regard, but it's been a while since we did a formal proper one at home. This is true. So the way this usually goes is I approach Julie a couple days before our scheduled appointment and I say, let's talk about what we're going to talk about. And you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we never do it. And then we sit down and we just roll. Usually. So that's but kind of what's happening pre- again It's today. usually preceded by a, by a small spat argument of right. energy, of, of you wanting it to be figured out and me wanting to let it go. That's the, typical, uh, that's the typical cycle that we're on. But I think we're experiencing some deep evolution because there was none of that this time. I'm letting go. You are. I'm trying so beautifully to, I'm trying to go. grow. <laughs> well, I'm moving in your direction. Are you moving in mine? I think so. I was are actually you? feeling I like I wanted some structure. You did? What no. were you thinking? I don't know. I was just waiting for the inspiration, but. Well, let's kind of launch into this um, with one thought, which is we are coming off of an incredible energy output over the last six to nine months, pushing books out into the world. Uh, retreats, travel, speaking engagements, ramping up the podcast, like all of these things um, have been amazing experiences uh, that have um, really enhanced our lives, I think, uh, and helped us to you know connect with a lot of people in a meaningful way. Uh, but it's a lot of energy. And I found myself to be... Um, Burned out is not the right word, but uh, but definitely spread too thin and a little bit more exhausted than I would like. Well, I think lately. that really, if you characterize it really correctly or more authentically, it's really when this entire journey of wellness began between you and me or with you and me. So I would say that it began really in 2013 or maybe even 2012, when it really started to sort of turn. And here we are, 2018, right? That is the year. Um, So I think it's all of that time because we had been what I call benched, which is, uh, is my description of being dismantled and unable to really function in the world or be accepted by the world or find a way to plug in. And what happened is after that energy lifted and we were able to move, I'd say we've both been moving, right? We've yeah. been sort of thrilled. So your your window is looking back six years. Yeah. It has been that. I mean, I think as soon as there was an opportunity to move forward, we both kind of dove in. Of course. Head first and haven't looked back. Yeah. But it's just been a constant like forward, 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 forward. What's next? What's next? What's next? Okay. What can we do? Like, I think we were just so, so grateful to have, um, the opportunity to express ourselves Mm -hmm. after what we had endured for so many years that, um, I need speaking for myself, there's almost like a fear of slowing down. Right. Like, I don't want to slow down. Like, it was so hard for so long. Now everything is working. Like, I just want to build, 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 build. And my, you know, my sort of default mode is like work harder, you know, push harder, more go is better. further. More a lot is, more is better. More is better. Right. If this is working, let's do more. Let's double down on this. And I can look at that and say, well, that's part of my success equation or learning how to leverage that aspect of my personality for growth and for good has benefited me, but it has a dark side as well because I don't always know how to modulate that or dial back on the volume. And I think when I do do that or when I'm forced to do that, then I experience fear like, well, if I slow down, the world's gonna pass me by or whatever, right? And so I get stuck into this um, unsustainable model of like content creation that I think has left me a little bit fried lately. Right. And I think, I mean, listen, I mean, when you've been benched for nine years and almost been completely annihilated in every way, the way that we were, 
uh, it's appropriate. You know, we then then the platform opened up and we were able to move into it. And we've done it like in complete joy, complete merging with our authentic voice. I think we've kept it really real. I think we've kept it, you know, really raw and really vulnerable and really true to who we both are. And then there comes a time when we have to understand, and I take this more in our marriage together, is life is about evolution, and we are always evolving and changing. And so uh, if we stick or hold on to one station too hard or too fast or hold on too tightly or grip too tightly, uh, there's going to be some stagnation with that. You know, the energy is going to stop flowing. And so the conversation between you and me as, as husband and wife has been, how do we evolve together past an 18-year you know, commitment, 18 mm-hmm. year marriage or almost 20, um, you know, how does that evolve and what does that look like? And so I think this is about evolution. And I think the way that it's very re- relevant to what's going on in wellness or in the social media stage today is that, you know, the ocean, there is a tide that comes in and comes out and there are waves that come in and come out. And so, you know, years ago I did like every Tony Robbins seminar before I met you, like I was walking on fire and doing like all the financial mastery and everything that he offered. And at the time, I'm sure he's evolved a lot, but at the time, the thing that he didn't really address was the natural cycle of life, the natural rhythm of life. And so if we, if we don't take those times to replenish, to reboot, to reconsider, to fill back up again, we tend to start sharing, in my experience, from a, a need to be busy or that fear of not stopping and the authentic message becomes compromised, mm-hmm. you know, or the truth of where you are. So what do you think about that? Yeah, well, I'm somebody who wants it to be high tide all the time. You know, like I, I wanna deny the natural cycle of tides going in and out, right? And so it's like, okay, it's high tide. Let's keep it at high tide as long as possible. And I'm reluctant to kind of step back and, and, and allow that ebb and flow to occur. So that's like my, growth opportunity, right? Like that's that's the thing that I need to look at and acknowledge and accept and understand that that my reluctance to embrace that comes from a place of fear. And that fear is rooted in this idea that if I take my foot off the gas pedal, that it's all gonna go away, right? And, and somebody who's been really helpful in walking me through this in addition to yourself Uh, is Rob Bell. Like I've had long Mm -hmm. conversations with him about this because he'll do his podcast for a while and then he'll disappear like to make something, right? To like recharge his batteries or write a play or a novel. Or, I mean, the guy is like just a font of creative output. It's insane. And he's like, yeah, I go away. It's okay. And then I come back and everyone's psyched that I'm back. You should take a break. And I'm like, I can't take a break. I can't, what if I I can't, I've never missed a week in the podcast. Like I'm I'm not in a place where I'm like, okay, I'm going to take a break. From Don't the worry, podcast. he's not like, taking a break. I'm not, I'm not doing that. That's not We're what not I'm there. saying. But I think there's a lot of wisdom um, in uh, having this, you know, self-assuredness that you can step back and take care of yourself. And if you don't do that, ultimately, it's impacting what you're trying to accomplish in the long run, anyway. So to recognize that ebb and flow, to uh, have the self-confidence, the assuredness to walk away from time to time to emphasize self-care or appreciate the ebb and flow or to attune your attention to other things in your life that are important, I think is absolutely crucial and, and, and critical, especially if you wanna be um, you know, productive for the long haul. If, yeah, if you wanna be alive long-term, yeah. <laughs> let's, yeah, just, exactly. let's just call it like that. I mean, I think you know, it's, not just, it's not just you, it's the culture. It's what the culture puts on you. You know, more is better, competition. You got to, you know, get yours while the getting's good. You know, if you don't grab this opportunity, then someone else is going to take it. All of those um, those isms or those beliefs that are in the planetary grid that make us be on the hamster wheel and be making movements and actions that may not be in alignment with who we are or may not be really in truth of who we are. And like your friend Rob Bell... Um, af- my friend too, <laughs> my yeah. friend too now, after um, the Plant Power uh, Italia retreat and releasing the cookbook, 
um, I actually got back into town and I could feel the similar energy that descended in or came over us in 2007. And that was at the beginning of the dismantling phase or the benching, as I call it, where I'm benched. I could feel it. I could sense it in my body. And what that told me was don't post on social media. So I'm coming, I'm actually just on the tail end of a good two month break. What did that feel like specifically? Um, It's like I've described on the podcast before. Like I say, if you've been dismantled and this isn't a dismantling in the same way, what it is, is it's an opportunity for evolutionary growth. And when it shows up, it's a feeling of, I, I call it the universal faucet is turned off. It's just a pause. It feels like everything is suspended in midair. And I even tried to post, like on our anniversary, I had a beautiful image that our friend Kurt Arrigo took when we were together in Venice, this gorgeous uh, photo. And I wrote this long thing about us and literally none of my systems would allow me to post it. Like the technology just refused me. And I'm- You mean you tried to and it like the upload failed? It literally wouldn't (laughs) upload. And after like three or four hours- And I should say, just to like interrupt, that you walk around with emitting some- some kind of like frequency that makes all of technology in your orbit fail. Even at the beginning of this podcast, we had trouble getting the cameras set up like they weren't working properly because you carry, I don't know, some frequency that makes all of that fritz out. Like, it's I don't know what's energetics. going on with it's, that. It's some <laughs> resonance. But the thing is, is so I, I told you it was our anniversary and we met actually to do a ceremony together and to meet and have dinner and have time. And Mm -hmm. I told you, I'm sorry that I didn't post anything. I actually had spent three hours and it didn't, it just didn't come to fruition. So I'm mature enough and I've been through that enough that I know what that is. And that is stop. Do not do that. You're not to do that. So a lot of my friends have been reaching out. We're really very unloved. Oh, honey. No, no. like I didn't didn't even like whatever. No, you care about that. No, you understood when I talked (laughs) to you, but A lot of my friends reached out to me and have been, you know, we're really concerned and you must be going through a lot and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it's why, because you took a break from, yeah, because I'm not posting and I'm not there. And the thing is, is that this is such a beautiful time for me because it's not, um, it's not intense like it was before. And I know the signs, I know the cues. So I know that this is a moment that I'm able to step into the void and to, Uh, gain insights, awarenesses, reclaim parts of myself so that I can refine what my offerings are creatively so they are truly in alignment with what I came here to do. And each of us, that is our main mission, is to fully live our own individual design in real truth. Um, So it's been amazing. I'm not all the way through it, but I've had a lot of awarenesses and a lot of things that have, you know, gifts that I've been grabbing. Mm -hmm. The main thing that I've noticed with you over the last year is you have really stepped into your creative powers. Um, And I'm seeing somebody who is definitely much more expressed than you have been in the past. And I see with that an accompanying like sort of... um, um, stronger sense of of self, and I think it's been an interesting journey and path because for many years, you know, I was the first person to kind of get rec- You know, I was getting a lot of recognition for things. You're more that famous I'd done. than me. Let's just and say you it. were kind of like, you know, in the shadow, like you know, as oh, she cooks the food or whatever. You know, and it's like, hello, like none of this would have happened without like all the stuff that I did. And I think there was some, you know, like some some level of frustration about that, not because you had a desire to be publicly acknowledged, but more because you felt like you were you were being muted in what you had to offer. And what I've seen in the last year is you really owning your own strength and capabilities and your own path and stepping into that with your podcast and the books, not just the books that you're writing, but the music and and just the way you carry yourself. So I, you know, I feel like you're 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 so much more fully expressed and and you're happier as a result of that. Well, like you're you. you're more fully actualized in the things that you want to be doing. So talk to me a little bit about like how you. Yeah. So, I mean, I think again, that this is all divine timing. Like you're in my union, whatever we're doing here on a higher level, on a human level, this is the timing that was laid out. 
So you were supposed to go first in this scenario. And by you going first, you've opened the doors and opened so many people to be willing and able to hear what it is that I'm sharing. And so we've experienced this on retreat. Yeah, that was completely frustrating to me, like beyond, Uh because, you know, for me, this has been an entire spiritual evolution. It's required ceremony. It's required ritual, um, heart intention, holding you in your highest essence. Um, Also, you know, all the children raising the kids and fighting to save the house and everything else that, that we experienced. So when Sanjay Gupta picked up your story and it was basically sort of described as, dude, hits middle age and loses, you know, 50 pounds or whatever it was. Like I tell the story, like I almost spit my cereal out across the table because that part of the story was just the membrane. It was only the top, but the way that our culture is, and in order for us to affect change, that is the portal that people could access Mm -hmm. what was really going on. And so it's all been completely in in divine timing. It wasn't because I was in some paralysis and couldn't access my power. It's because this is the way it was meant to unfold. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'm in a moment now that I am finally coming into the embodiment of everything that I came here to do. And it's a super exciting time for me. And thank you for that recognition. Yeah. So walk me through your your daily routine, your regimen, or specifically how you spend your morning. Well, I'm a... I'm in a lot of flow right now. So I wouldn't even say that I have, I don't have a discipline. I'm not disciplined. I'm tuned into the flow of energy. And so I'm often, it depends, you know, it depends on what's going on, but I'm in meditation, in channeling music, I'm uh, receiving sounds and tones uh, spontaneously in meditation. So I'm not looking to write a song in a traditional way. So I'm in an exploration in the music for sure. Um, I'm in this happens in the early morning. So this is what's going yeah, I mean, on. When I'm, you're, you get up like at an ungodly hour. Yeah. You get up at like four, four thirty. Yeah, typically. usually, typically, and then that starts uh, an entire process actually. So it's a way of getting up. It's getting up in reverence. It's bathing my body in reverence almost as a ritual. It's preparing to sit in meditation. It's receiving the tea as communion with the trees, with the planet, connecting with this energy. Then I'll move into music and then I'll start playing and writing. So I've been writing some new music and allowing some new music to come in. But what I would say is key about everything that I'm doing is it's created from a first a place of ceremony, which connects with and recognizes all the energy that is unseen, which is a partner or a co-creator in everything that ends up being seen. And this was what I was doing behind the scenes of Ultraman, of Finding Ultra, Mm -hmm. of our entire life for so many years. Right. One of the things you've been talking about uh, pretty regularly lately is this importance of, of ceremony and ceremony as this almost lost art that is so uh, so much an integral part of human evolution and the development of culture over the years. Uh, you know, regardless of, uh, if you look back anthropologically at any tribe, at any, you know, sort of indigenous culture, ceremony is very much a central part of daily life. And in our modern developed world, we've really moved away from ceremony in almost every regard. And I think that that's, um, that's a loss. And it's something that I think um, creates this void in our experience and leaves us perhaps even unconsciously searching for something that mimics that, you know, trigger that's deep inside of us to, you know, have that kind of thing in our life. And, and, I want to hear your thoughts about that because I know you have a lot of thoughts on that, but that kind of came up for me the other day. There was a article in the New York Times. It was on the front page of the Sunday Review. It's a big deal. And it was, the title was something like, you know, podcast bros want to optimize your life. And it was an article about this movement of podcasters in the health and quote unquote, like life optimization sector, uh, 
who have developed large audiences. And it mentions people like Joe Rogan and Tim Ferriss and, and Lewis Howes and Aubrey Marcus, all of people, you know, all people I know. And, you know, I consider myself part of that community, although I wasn't mentioned in the article. And I have like a conflicting perspective on it because on the one hand, it was a little bit snarky. It was a little bit condescending, like the use of bro terminology uh, and how these people are sort of, um, you know, shilling self-help techniques, et cetera. But fundamentally beneath that was this thesis that with the kind of crippling of religious institutions, people are searching for spirituality in, in new and different ways. And this podcast space is filling that void for a certain part of the population. And I think that's right. I think that's correct. And I think it does speak to this lack of ceremony or this um, modern gestalt that we're in that has moved us away from the importance of collective community-based ceremony that is part and parcel of what makes us human. Yeah. And I mean, I would, I would even go to say it's very individual. It's very personal. So I'd say the reason that is very true. And the reason is because we are spiritual beings having a human experience or possibly multidimensional beings having a simultaneous experience. So there's only part of us is it, that is experiencing life in this physical form. And what's happened, the reason that we've gotten away from it is because of religions, because of dogmas, doctrines, rules, uh, sinning, uh, you know, all these kind of things that can be the cage of religion or dogma of religion. And when ritual or ceremony is something as natural as walking out in nature. And so what I'm sharing is that you don't need a priest or a guru or anybody to give you permission to commune with that part of yourself that is not physicalized. And in fact, I encourage that you don't, that you don't use any systems that exist. Any systems that exist on this planet that have been done in traditions are infiltrated with suppressive, suppressive energy. So it's much more natural and authentic if you can be childlike and do what is what you feel, do what is natural to you. So if you have something that you want to foster or a relationship, uh, a dream, uh, a garden, a sacred idea, anything, uh, simply sitting and communing with that, asking for the unseen energy that is maybe your multidimensional part of yourself to come into the experience and co-create. You can offer flowers that signify your love for it, your hopes, your dreams. It's really the intention that you have when you enter into these things. And I would take this back as an example for you and me in our marriage. We had a wedding ceremony. Well, let's start before then. We had a shamanic ceremony, just the two of us in Mexico, that included a sweat lodge and a fire and a releasing of anything that would keep us from each other, any secrets, anything that had happened, we were able to put that in the fire to begin at, a, at an even ground. So that was the beginning, and it was a glorious engagement and glorious wedding, just the two of us, just between us. I remember it so beautifully. We had an amazing meal, like on a floating barge under the stars in Mexico with no one around, um, you had hidden me messages. I still have the shell you gave me from that moment. Mm -hmm. And I have a hawk feather that was given to us by the shaman who told me that was given to him by his grandfather. So that was the beginning of this relationship between Rich and, Ju and Julie. And then we had like the spiritual world concert of all time that was the most magic, one of the most magical days I've ever been alive. It was on our land beneath the house with our boys. I was pregnant with Mathis and we had uh, African wedding singers and chandlers and Bhagavan Das did the fire ceremony and we had gospel singers and it was absolutely magnificent. The clouds actually form the shape of like angels in the sky. It was crazy, crazy beautiful night. Then all those years after that, when we almost, you know, lost everything and almost felt like we didn't make it through our trials, we then 
renewed our vows with our children then after we had had the two girls. And so we had a ceremony with just the six of us and everybody offered something into this family marriage. It was still one of the most beautiful days of my life. You read me something that day that literally slayed me. It opened my heart up and touched me at such a deep level that I I was literally melted in every single layer of my being. I strung garlands for us. We each had flower-like garlands that I had done. And now, cutting to 15 years, what did we do on our 15-year anniversary? We went and had a ceremony. We ignited what the future holds for us, talked about our intentions, what we want to do together, what you want to be. I think my question to you was, what would you like to experience for the next phase of your life? Not what are you going to give me, but what do you want to experience? Mm -hmm. And so we've made that commitment to each other in that way. And I'm old enough now to look in the rearview mirror and see I did those same practices with so many things in our life, so many, and they do work. There is energy in that powerful, powerful energy, and that's available to all of us. What I hear in that is a couple things. I mean, first of all, uh, I don't know if you differentiate between ritual and ceremony. I guess they're sort of the same thing, um, but there are certain instances in which kind of creating um, formality around a ceremony is appropriate, like it's a wedding or a renewal of vows or our anniversary. But then there's also this practice of bringing ritualistic behaviors into your daily life so that it becomes part and parcel of just kind of how you approach the world. So the idea of every morning, you know, greeting the day with, you know, whether it's, you know, taking a walk in nature and, and focusing your attention on, on something that you want to more deeply express in your life, you know, kind of cultivating the love and the energy and the intention around that is something that you don't have to create a lot of formal structure around. It's more like a mindset, a frame of mind, and a daily habit that becomes ritualized and ultimately contributes to the manifestation of whatever it is that you're seeking. Yeah. So I would say those ceremony, those points that I was giving, those examples, that's a that's a true ceremony. Those were sort of milestones and those moments that were astrologically important or important in our timeline of evolution. Ritual, ritual, I would say, would be more the daily, you know, more the daily mm -hmm. thing that you do. So for instance, just two quick things. When I wake up in the morning, when my feet hit the ground, my feet touch the ground, I bow down and kiss the floor, basically. That's my first act of the morning. My last act of the morning is in meditation in bed, rising up on my knees and extending my arms to the heavens with gratitude for everything I've experienced. And then there's a bow down after that and a release of every triumph and every tragedy. And if you have to articulate what you get out of that, what does that mean to you? And how does that impact your life? It's a, it's a meaning. It's a deep meaning for life. It's a connection. It's a reminder of the fact that I am part of the earth, that I am here as part of a, an expression and it's a reverence and an honoring for my very life, for the very life force that is pulsing through this magnificent instrument, which houses our spirit. So it's, a, it's an act of reverence, an act of devotion, a reset in a way to, to me remembering that I honor that which is unseen. And when you say unseen, what does that mean to you? It means spirit, soul. Um, I mean, there's, you know, different people have different definitions for that. So I won't get into like the mm -hmm. semantics on it. But basically that, that part of the life force, which is not embodied in this physical body, but which is co-creating and interacting with me always. Yeah. And, you know, over the years, you're the one who's always been the motivating force behind all of the kind of more other kinds of like 
formal ceremonies that we've done. You know, annually we'll get together around the fire and we'll write down, you know, things we want to let go of and put them in the fire. And you create this kind of ritualistic, you know, kind of shamanic environment around that that gives it weight and gives it meaning. And I, I think those are really beautiful expressions of of this human experience that we're having. And, you know, to kind of um, speak to what I mentioned earlier, we really have moved past this in our, in our modern culture. You know, we don't, we don't, you know, we have bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs and we have christenings and we have these kind of, um, you know, ceremonies that are trapped in religious dogma. Um, and I think for a lot of people, they kind of go through the motions of these things like blah, 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 but they don't have that, that, that intention behind them or, um, I'm not saying everybody, I'm, I'm sure for a lot of people they do, but I think to the extent that we can create our own rituals that work for us and and treat them with the same kind of reverence and sacred energy, that they really are are powerful. You know, they're powerful touchstones and and ways of remembering and ways of, of achieving clarity over, you know, who you are and, and you know, where you've been and, and where you want to go. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, the thing is, is if, if you, if you are in a religion or experiencing religion and it's making you feel expanded and free, then that's perfect for you. So it's, you know, everyone is completely different. I'm just speaking to those of us that have felt oppressed by religion or confined by religion or sullied by religion, shamed, you know, those type of things. So in spiritual awareness, uh, there isn't shame, there isn't guilt, there's an expansion. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that is what we're experiencing by tapping into that force. How do you think we're doing in our marriage? How do we think? Well, you know, actually, I was going to tell you. So I have this thing <laughs> when I read a book, when I read a book, I just open it up to whatever page randomly. It drives me and insane. And then um, it gives me the message that I need in that moment. And it <laughs> yeah. actually works all the time, like 100% of I the time. I don't understand this at all. So today, Rich was like, you know, are we going to, do we have something decided? Or are we just going to wing it? Or what's going on? I was like, yeah, I don't know what you mean. I was like, let's just go turn <laughs> the mics on. So I came into the podcast room, which I had, this is the first time that I'm sitting at this table and, uh, and I picked up, he has the prophet by Khalil Gibran and I opened it up spontaneously to a page. And so I'd like to read it to you. All right. So it says, then Almitra spoke again and said, and what of marriage master? <laughs> and he answered saying, you were born together and together you shall be forevermore. You shall be together when the white wings of death scatter your days I, you shall be together even in the silent memory of God. But let there be spaces in your togetherness, and let the winds of the heavens dance between you. Love one another, but make not a bond of love. Let it rather be a moving sea between the shores of your souls. Fill each other's cup, but drink not from one cup. Give another of your bread but eat not from this, give one another of your bread, but eat not from the same loaf, right? You get it? Mm -hmm. I'm not eating from your loaf. Mm -hmm. That's clear. Sing and dance together and be joyous, but let each one of you be alone. So that's a very same famous passage that is read at weddings, but I just randomly opened that up and we were going to talk about our marriage. So there you go. I think that that very well encapsulates kind of how we're approaching this next phase of our relationship as two people who have been together for 20 years. Um, it was interesting. I put up this video that, that Reese shot and edited the other day called why I live in a tent. Right. And it was just a really quick kind of fun, like explaining <laughs> like why I've been sleeping in a tent for two years. And I kind of, when we were shooting it, I spoke to um, the question of, you know, what does Julie think about this? And like, are you, are you in the dog house? Did she kick you out of the house? Or, you know, how does this impact, impact your intimacy and your marriage? And I answered that and then it just didn't make sense in the, in the edit of the video. So we left it out. So in the comments, like that's all anybody wants to know. Like everybody (laughs) has all these opinions about what this means and how our marriage must be on the rocks and, and, and this sort of thing. So um, that's just one aspect of, um, this place that we're in right now where we are deeply bonded 
yet living in and, and supporting each other, yet living independent lives. Yeah, I mean, I would say it is, in fact, been always the way we were bonded. Mm -hmm. So it was never before. But I think we've grown into a comfort level with it that's new mm. or a little bit more matured. Maybe, but maybe I don't think so. It doesn't feel so. any different to me. Really? No, not from my not from my perspective. All right, so what is your feel... perspective? Well, I feel like that's how we came together to begin with. It was never like uh, you complete me. That was never our sure. We were never that. It was like uh, you know, I will celebrate you as you realize all your dreams. That's sort of the tagline of our marriage, right? It was never I expect you to do X, Y, and Z for me. I don't think. No. 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 So, um, yeah, it's pretty amazing, actually, for me to sit here. And of course, I didn't read any of those comments. But for you to tell me that people said that about our marriage. And do you know how much reaction I have to that? I don't know. Zero. Zero. Like, literally, there is nothing living in me. Well, that, that stuff doesn't bother me at all because they have they don't know. So, like, well, how, why would that bother me? But like, it's just, no it's cool because it, it's an indication of the clarity and the truth of where we really are. Because if we were in trouble or we were not, up, you know, not honest about certain aspects, you could never post something like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It would be way too vulnerable. So yeah, I mean that just works really really well for us. I think we're we're both incredibly independent. We're also having this sort of um alchemization of extreme polarities between you and me, how completely different we are, and that causes a friction that has been causing creating an alchemy and an evolution between us. And I now don't find you as polar extreme as I did before. Or annoying. Well, that's part of it, but I'm sure <laughs> that goes both yeah. ways. Yeah. So I'm I'm sort of feeling like we're starting to sort of become same, like a sameness of metal, metal, M-E-T-T-L-E. -E. Uh, you know, like it's like the passage from the Ramayana that I that I read to you, that I sent to you on our eighth wedding anniversary, where it talks about how we've been battered by the shores and the waves of life, and we've come into a certain beauty, a ruggedness of nature that is only achieved through the, those experiences mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. And so right now, I mean, for my sadhana and what I do, it's like, I don't want you in my bedroom. Like, first of all, I'm doing stuff in my sleep state. I'm processing energy. I'm in my own exploration. So I need that container so that I can develop myself uh, in the manner that I meant to same way you need your own spaces. And one of those spaces just happens to be a tent. Yes, the tent, <laughs> which I love. But I will just say for the record, I mean, our intimacy is actually extraordinarily uh, well. And it's still amazing to me that we could be together this many years and the the plus for me, for him being in a tent on a daily basis, is when we are together, it's like being with my boyfriend for the first time, every time. Mm. Sorry for the sharing too much, but I like, since no, you guys asked. Yeah, no, that's that's a good answer. And I think that's accurate. Like I I share that that perspective. Um, you know, neither of us are people who like need to be by each other's side 24 hours a day. Uh, but when we do come together, it has to be special. We have to be present and we can make that, you know, that intimate time mean a little bit more, I think. And so it works for us. Maybe it doesn't work for other people out there, but it's been working for us quite well. And that's all that matters. Yeah. So, but let's, let's explore this subject of relationships uh -oh. a little bit more deeply. I mean, there's a lot of people, look, everybody's in some kind of relationship with another person in some form or another, whether intimate, friendship, family, whatever. And I think that relationships are the root of the majority of most people's struggles and pain. Um, so as somebody who has started you know, working with other individuals, you've been counseling people and hosting these retreats and, and working with people on a pretty intimate level. Um, let's unpack this subject of relationships and, and where you see commonly people misstepping or 
um, getting themselves into situations that are unnecessarily provoking that kind of suffering? Well, the biggest suffering is buying into the prince princess paradigm in whatever form, even if it's same sex or, you know, or not, um, is thinking that another is going to rescue you or complete you. Um, if you're in that paradigm and that's where you're beginning in a relationship, um, you're going to experience that it's not true, that that just doesn't work out. And I would say that in relationship and in really every single situation, every single challenge that comes up, the answer lies within your own being. So the, the resolution of it is only happening inside your own awareness. So no one can make you feel another way or act another way or experience an event another way than you. So it's your own self. And if we can remove whatever we're projecting onto our partner of anything that they need to act a certain way to make you happy or make me happy, if I can remove that, I I can say right off the bat, over 50% of the conflict will simply disappear. It's very difficult. I think most people, um, when they're searching for a partner, they're innately attracted to another human being that um, that transcends like their conscious awareness or fits their pain body. Yeah, their exactly. Trauma, like their they're going to set of trauma. You see this all the time. Like people will will end up with that person who basically mimics the behavior patterns of whoever caused you pain as a young person, right? And you perpetuate this pattern and you're not even consciously aware that you're choosing that. But that's what your pain body is going to find that pain body in the other person that matches up perfectly. And you're meeting each other's, you know, sort of unhealthy needs in that regard. And I think it takes a lot of introspection and and internal work to be able to, first of all, recognize that in yourself. And perhaps it takes a couple bad relationships before you become intuitively aware of that and transcend that to find the person that will that will meet you in a healthy way, right? Because often we think we are attracted to a certain person because of reason X, but it's really reason Y that is propelling you in that direction. Yeah, so... What I would say, it's taking responsibility for your own love, taking responsibility for the way you feel inside of your being. That takes a level of maturity. And if you aren't ready to, what will happen is, what we do is, at hum, as humans is we meet somebody and we're like, you, you know, and all the, all the hormones are flowing or whatever, the love endorphins. And then we project an image onto the person that's coming from our own inner experience, which has nothing to do with who they are. And then we may marry them or end up with them. And when they turn out to not be the projection that we placed on the person, then we become angry with them. Right. And we want to throw them away. So we But even may, backing that up, we're we're attracted to that person and then kind of Baked into that is this sense that if if they, if I can make this relationship work, if I can if I can get with this person, then this is going to solve a lot of my problems, and I'm going to feel better about myself, and my life will be better, and a lot of things will be improved. That's well, part of a, the projection. It's a beautiful illusion. I mean, listen, I'm a hopeless romantic. I love being romantically in love. It's wonderful. It's just an illusion. It's not. It's actually not true because mm -hmm. it's you complete me. It's, oh, you complete me. So when, with your love, then I'm everything. No, the love is coming from inside. So what I'm saying is, is that if you become disenchanted with that, that person who's not living up to the image that you projected in the first place, you'll trade it in and get another person and then you'll recreate the same scenario again. With yeah, someone and at else. the same time, water rises to its own level, right? So if you're in a certain place, you're going to attract a certain person. And most people look at a potential partner as like they're trying to step up their life, right? Like they're looking at that person as somebody who maybe not necessarily will complete them, but um, perhaps has certain qualities that well, that all, person wants in their life. But Instead of looking at like, I need that in my life, so I'm going to get that, 
What if you flip that equation and said, I'm going to become the person that I would like to be with? In other words, raising your own watermark so that you're at that level of the person you're trying to attract to becoming the person that you're trying to attract as somebody who might actually be a good partner for that well, person. Well, that's it. I didn't say that very eloquently. Yeah, I got but. it. I mean, you're right. People say, oh, you know, he married up or she married up. So it is something that's in the culture. And yeah, if you had the maturity and you had the awareness to develop yourself into the being, into your most authentic, amazing self, then you're going to have the opportunity to pair with somebody who meets your level. Absolutely true. The thing is, is that most people aren't in that space. Most people are in sort of like knee-jerk relationships where their pain body attached to somebody and, you know, sort of you have the same level of trauma. I mean, you and I have alcoholism in our families. So there's something about our humor, the way we joke around. It's got alcoholism in it. Like that's part of, it's part of the program. It's part of the way that we, or, you know, our families interacted and we identified and that's familiar so when I meet you and I talk to you, it's like, oh, he has the same humor I have, you know, which is still awesome. But I guess what I would say is in relationship is where we have really one of the greatest opportunities because it ignites it in your face over and over and over again. It's much easier to be single and go live in a cave than it is for you to be, you know, in a in modern relationship. So what I would say is if you're in a relationship and you're running, you know, up against the edges, use it. Like it's a beautiful tool. And whether you end up in it forever or some people tell me, you know, my first marriage failed and I was like, or it completed, the contract completed, it's not failed, you know, and then they're like, oh yeah, I did get my kids, you know, my kids did come into the world or, you know, it's not about like an end point, like, well, you made it to your whole life and your marriage was a success. It's like, it's a living, <laughs> breathing entity. You know, there are days that you and I think about leaving each other probably, or, you know, it's like, it's like it's moving all the time. You have to check in, like what's going on? It's a living thing. Mm -hmm. So it's about being in the flow <laughs> and understanding that, you know, it, relationship is a wonderful place for transformation because it will reflect all of your issues right back at you. Yeah. I think that that subject of, of stasis and flow is incredibly uh, important in how we think about our relationships to other human beings, but it's also applicable to everything. I mean, I talk about this all the time with respect to alcoholism. There is no stasis. Like every thought you entertain, every interaction you have with another human being, every behavior that you manifest is either moving you towards a drink or away from a drink. There's no cruise control. Like there's no, there's nothing static ever in anything. Not in my relationship with you, not in my relationship with my alcoholism or anything. Everything is in motion. This table feels solid, but it is molecules that are spinning and moving in imperceptible ways. Everything is in flux all the time. And I think if you can um, adopt this perspective that everything is impermanent and that everything that you do say how you are um, is moving you towards what you desire or away from it, and the greater appreciation you can have for um, the fact that your relationships are always in flux and are always a reflection of how you're approaching them, then I think it allows people to have a greater appreciation for um, what is most important. Yeah, that's beautifully said and just sort of ties it back into how we began the podcast. And that's what I'm saying. It's like everything is moving energy and we are co-creating some experience all the time. We're casting spells with our words. We're, you know, we're changing scenarios with our thoughts, with our actions. And so ceremony is a way to connect with that unseen energy that is a part of that energetic experience as it starts to move and shape. And so it does mean something if I've taken a moment and held your hand and gazed into your eyes and stated out loud to the universe and to your heart that I love you, that I'm committed to you, and that I'm here to stand witness to your glorious expression and evolution and that I am, I am here and I'm, I'm giving you that voice. That means something. 
It's not nothing. It mm-hmm. means something deeply. And so it's those acts and those little things or ritualistic things that we do throughout the day and the weeks and the days and the months that create a vision. You know, it takes a life to become the seeds for our life we planted many, many years ago. And there's been countless ceremonies, ones we've even forgotten that were just, you know, the the six of us out by a fire or, you know, some sacred event or something like that, it, that we were we were cultivating the energy for what our relationship is, what our marriage is, what our, you know, creative expressions are and what our family life is. Mm-hmm. We've been doing that all along with consistency. Yeah. And it's not a quid pro quo thing. No, like we, we it's not a do, pill. We've been doing this for a long time and it doesn't, it doesn't pay off in this, you know, mathematical equation sort of way. And it's not immediate and it, it doesn't, show up in the way or in the form that you would like it to or when you would like it to. But I think it's more of a mindset in how you approach your life that, 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 that provides your life with greater depth and meaning. Just meaning. Yeah. That meaning and that connection, definitely. And I think that also this is just to share a little bit more about my benched uh, two month sort of uh, inner experience that I've been in. I was really struck profoundly over the amount of content that is being uh, given into the collective and knowing that thoughts are things and that technology takes up space. It's like when you feel into the planetary grid or what's happening around the earth with all the output that's going out there, um, I felt a real need for discernment, discernment for what information I'm I'm associated with, what am I participating with, and how is that in alignment with my divine design, and what is the highest use? And so I felt very sort of, um, I was given pause, actually, uh, because I've been experiencing in this, in this time uh, the beauty of having actual physical human uh, friends and support in my life. Imagine that. Imagine that. So I was working with my yoga therapist, Michael Manfredo, who's uh, just a, a master at the body. And he said, a, he basically delivered me like a Zen sword, little, uh, you know, explosion into my psyche. And it, and it went like this. I was just trying to stretch my leg in a way. And I was in my bedroom and I said, oh, my, you know, my leg won't reach. So I'll move the mat. And he said to me, or we could move the bed. And that just hit me so profoundly at so many levels. And I kept hearing this tape in my head for days afterwards where I would say to myself, I dedicated my life to moving the bed. And I was aware of the limited perspective that we have um, in our, you know, maybe human self of really what is going on and really thinking about fake news and how we're creating these pockets of experience on Instagram. And we think the world is colored this way. And in fact, there's a whole nother color happening in another, another area. And I was just given pause, actually great pause. Um, in addition, being at revitalize, um, this wellness summit in June, which was extraordinary uh, I was asked to give the blessing along with Shaman Durek, which was beautiful. And um, and I also was taken aback at the focus of mental, el- mental illness and mental health uh, being on a trajectory of wanting to get it to the visibility that cancer has in 15 years. And this is like we're trying to solve problems from a way of thinking that is obsolete, that is, that is proven that it is not working. So explain to me your, your negative reaction to the idea of a spotlight being on mental illness in the way that it is on cancer. So well, what we need is, and this is what, what was brought into awareness, is we need tools and techniques to facilitate humanity in clearing their trauma. Because all these diseases and all these illnesses and uh, imbalances are a spiritual crisis. It's, it's where it's originating. So if we had this, this connection, this deep connection, 
we would understand that all life is divine and we would understand the power of thoughts and things and ancestral traumas that are lodged in the body. So the way that we become well, the way that we enter into a state of expansion is not by focusing on the thing that we don't want. So you could use cancer as a subject, and I apologize in advance for anybody who has transcended cancer or become healthy or even used, uh, you know, Western uh, methods. You know, it's all appropriate in, in different individuals' experiences, but I'm not one. I'm not marching for cancer. I'm not wearing a pink ribbon to bring awareness to cancer. I'm bringing my life into awareness of spiritual connection, which is beyond any pill, pharmaceutical. And so this is the problem because we have to be mature enough to stop playing that game. And it's difficult because there's been a lot of suffering and there's a lot of trauma around it. Um, I don't see that as the way through. So what I was seeing is mental health being presented at the biggest wellness summit in the country or maybe the world. And the trajectory was in 15 years, we'll have enough focus on it. You know, the same amount of awareness as cancer. But is there a cure for cancer yet? And how many billions of dollars are being made by pharmaceutical companies? And where is the money in the line of the whole thing? So well, I think there's a there's it's worth exploring um, this a little bit more in depth. I mean, my I kind of see that a little bit differently in that, to be sure, you know, I'm of the perspective that you know, mental health is it's not everything, but it's almost everything, and we we are in the midst of a spiritual crisis of consciousness right now. I think that's driving a lot of the insanity that we see in our culture. Um, and then kind of just beneath the surface is a tremendous amount of, um, of you know, I don't know if you'd call it mental illness or a lack of mental and emotional well-being. So much so that, that you and I both know, like, you know, you can encounter people that are seemingly high functioning and like they've got their shit together and they're productive and have good jobs and families and have the two cars in the driveway and all that. But if you can get them <clears throat> in a trusting place where they allow themselves to be a little bit vulnerable and you just poke them on the shoulder, it all comes out. And you realize that we're all carrying, to some degree, we're all carrying some form of trauma um, or, or you know, I, I don't like that word mental illness, but, some, you know, we're not all completely mentally and emotionally healthy. We all have our, we all have our, our battles that we're waging and things that we're trying to overcome. Um, and I think there is something to be said for a greater appreciation for the fact that this is something that we need to consider in a different way, or at least raise awareness that this is actually what's going on um, in terms of how we treat that and how we communicate about that. That's a different conversation. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I get that part of it. And yes, um, mental illness is not discussed and it's all around us. And in, you know, every other family that you come upon has some level, you know, so it is. What I mean to say is that the solution is not in the methods that have not been serving us. And so what it did is it brought into my awareness the need for spiritual tools spiritual tools that are free of isms that allow people to reclaim their freedom and to live a life of prevention, a life of celebration of true health and wellness. And that's in all areas, physically, spiritually, emotionally. I just don't see the trajectory. It doesn't give me hope to see somebody say in 15 years, that's too many people for me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's somebody's brother, child, son, I get that, you know, daughter, and so it's a little hard for, it's, it's difficult for me because I know by even saying this, you know, it's, I'm going to get, you know, there's going to be blowback and people are going to be, you know, like freaking out. Um, and I have to step into a place where I live my truth. You know, it's like, this is what I do. You know, I assist people uh, in transition. I assist people in clearing trauma. Um, I, 
this is my divine design. This is what I do. This is what I did for you. This is what I did over all those years. Mm -hmm. And this is what fruited the transformation and realization in your life. And you, with you in agreement with me, I mean, mm-hmm. you're, we're, we're in together, you know, at many, many, many levels. So I don't mean that, you know, you're every bit as in this with me as I am. But what I'm just saying is it's just a crisis of spirituality. And what I would say is, you know, there is a place where you've watched everything on Netflix and there's nothing left. There is a place where you've gone to every concert or you've eaten every chocolate cake. Like, what then? You know, it's like there's so much more. That's a conversation that we've had a bunch of times where it's sort of like, all right, well, we're in our 50s. Like, everything is kind of like, really, another superhero movie? Like, is there anything that we can get? Are, Are we just over it now? Like, what's next? Where's the meaning? Where's the depth? Yeah, and the thing is, is the life is precious. You know, life is so precious and sacred. I mean, this is a profound moment in history and we need everyone. We need everybody to be more of who they are. So please don't misunderstand. I value and honor everybody's individual choice to live their like life as they choose. It is their right. I just feel like it is time for us to stop playing the old record and there's all this other energy that's available to us. And so let's start looking into that. Let's start embracing that. And uh, let's find a way to health and wholeness and wellness that is merged in spiritual awareness. So it's, it's all, all of the life, not just half of the life. So if somebody's listening to this and they're feeling stuck in their life, They feel like they're ready for some form of transformation, whether physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual. Um, You know, one of the things that 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 I've realized is that there's this cavernous gap between information and action. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to the airport. There's eight thousand self help books on the shelf. Like, obviously, people love this stuff. They love to read about self help. They want to. Um, learn more about how they can change their life uh, in positive ways, whether it's financial or interpersonal or what have you. And every month there's a new crop of these books, right? There's an insatiable audience for this information. And yet when you canvas the population, um, you see a lot of people who are suffering in all of these different ways who are still hamstrung paralyzed and unable to um, put that information, presuming it's good information, into action in a way that catalyzes that transformation that, that we all seek. And this is getting back to what I would answer is this need for personal skin-on-skin contact. We need actual human beings that are in our communities that are you know, that have mastered some aspect of consciousness, whether it's a yoga therapist, whether it's an acupuncturist, whether it's a physician of Chinese medicine. Uh, I have, you know, a body worker who is an artist that's been working with my body for 10 years, one of my closest friends, Sion. Um, You can't get this on social media. You can't get it in a book. There's no hacking. There's no tips. It's like in order to really mature spiritually, you have to go through the experiences. And I also think in spirituality, it's quite interesting how we have this this program inside of us that makes us not want to pay for anything spiritual, right? So the minute somebody wants to charge something, there is a recoil, like, oh, careful, yet you'll go pay your dentist, you know, $20,000 to fix your tooth. But a, a, a skilled spiritual therapist can accomplish maybe 20 years of therapy in just a few sessions or maybe even one session. So it's like we're working with energetics. It's actually an energetic. And so I would say reach out in your community, you know, look, find, you know, try to commune with somebody. You know, I am doing limited personal sessions and that's not why, you know, I'm talking about this, but you can email me. Um, There's only one of me, um, and I am teaching retreats now, you know, one-on-one retreats. I am working on a program that I will be able to share that will be something that, you know, the 
population at large can follow. That's one of the reasons why I've taken the break. Mm -hmm. But I'm really discerning how to distill it down in the most simple way um, so that somebody can take these tools and go, oh, my, my dad is dying. What do I do? You know, how do I present for that? Or I've been diagnosed with terminal disease. How do I process that? And I want to also just make sure that it's clear everybody's journey is unique to them and them alone. It is about taking self-responsibility. There is no one size fits all. There is no, not that. It doesn't exist. So you have to take responsibility for your life, just how we've been talking about with health and with not eating processed foods and not drinking, you know, milk or dairy. You know, you have to take your own responsibility. No one's going to save you. You have to do it. But if you're committed to that and you're committed to know yourself, there are many beautiful people alive on the planet that are offering support in that way. One of the things that I love about this podcast is that it's creating community. It's creating a community of like-minded individuals, many of which feel alone in their community. Like they're not, you know, we live in Los Angeles, like these resources are abundant and accessible mm -hmm. to us. But if you're living in a remote area where, you know, the conversations that you're having at the local coffee shop, you know, don't reflect this kind of thing. And, and there is no scion body worker, you know, that that person is going to be able to access in their community. You know, what do you say to that person? And are there like some online resources that you can recommend or, or places that you go where you can learn more about these ideas and perhaps find, you know, people who can, you know, serve these, these goals for you in your own community? I guess, um, what I would say is those people do exist in your own community. And the same way with spiritual awareness or exploration, when you turn your face to the divine, to the unseen, it will meet you 1000%. So I will say, search, go ask, go find that grandmother that is the, you know, is the medicinal healer that, you know, is hidden down the street. Um, start asking once you have the will, do you remember how you used to tell me, like, it wouldn't matter what party we would walk into and you would say, you know, now, babe, it'd be good for you, like, not to talk. You know, don't say anything about your experience last night. And I would literally walk into these parties and the one person that was like me would be standing next to me. And three minutes later, we'd be in a full-blown multidimensional conversation. Right. And for the record... That, that that came off like I try to edit you no, no, or I'm no. trying to like mansplain or something like that. Like, please, you know. No, no, no. But you had like a comfort level. But like, yeah, like so, these people are like really not like you. Right. So. If I could explain yeah. and not mansplain, <laughs> what I would say is, look, Julie, uh, the Julie that you're hearing right now is a rather tempered version of Julie. Like she's out there, like you're out there in a big way and you can I go am? all the way to the mat How out on there? some pretty out there ideas. And so my own personal, this is a reflection of me, not you, like my own insecurity, like, oh my God, like if Julie, like goes down the rabbit hole, like talking to person X, like, like they're going to think like, you know, she's crazy or something. I know. Like oh my that. God. And so then you're like, married so to like, her. Yeah, so like, you must be so crazy. So I must be crazy. You know, that's my own bullshit. Like, <laughs> let's be clear. It's right? okay. My own insecurity and, and all of that. But I do admit, like I cop to like- he has like uh, physical she, discomfort. Like if she goes in and starts that, like, it's like, whoa, you know, like what's she going to say next? Exactly. Like, but that, normally that kind of I would find the vibe of the person. So I just offer that. And because of that reason, it's really not appropriate for me to share uh, certain resources online because it just wouldn't be appropriate to the mass. But what I would say is if anybody's feeling like you want more information, you can just email me directly and then I'll feel into your energy signature and I'll offer something that's specific for you. You want to give your email um, address? Yeah, so up. my email is srimatimusic at gmail.com, S-R-I-M-A-T-I music at gmail.com. Also, I am doing a retreat called Beloved at Miami's Sacred Space, and it's November 8th to the 11th of this year. Uh, it's an amazing program, three and a half days. If you want to come and work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I will be there. Also, I'm doing... a my first 
self-mastery course. This is a very exclusive life activation. It's in fact me going into ceremony and activating, facilitating for you the expression of your highest divine mission, uh, much in the same way that I've done for Rich, for myself, and for my family. This is taking place on Gozo in the month of October, October Gozo 10. Gozo in Malta. Gozo near Malta. It's the island next to Malta, so you fly into Malta. Um, October 10 to 13, I'm only accepting eight people. It's a very exclusive um, mastery group. If you feel like that's your divine appointment, you can call me as well, and I'll ask you to write something up for me, uh, and we'll see about that. That was some good self-promotion. Sorry, well, you asked. I mean, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. No, and I mean, the other thing is true. I mean, truly, the reason that I've taken this break is I'm I'm literally in a, in the biggest research moment of my life. I've I this level this need for discernment is it's in my veins. Like I'm I'm feeling the but need to be Explain what you mean by discernment. You, when you say discernment you're talking about your relationship to the world and social media. Discernment is what what energy am I sharing? What am I doing? Why am I doing it? And is it in the highest divine alignment? I'm keenly aware of personality programs right now. I can actually see them as separate energies and people. It's very weird. Um, I'm I'm wondering, like I don't want to, I don't want to create more karma for myself, obviously. And I don't want to share things that are not landing the way that. I want them to, or that are not the most effective. So I'm looking for the simplest, most efficient way for me to express myself authentically. So that is going to be divine through line is going to be reborn and it's going to have a new format. You haven't podcasted in a while. I haven't put up a podcast in like two or three months, which is crazy because I love that forum, but it's really, really important for me to get my bearings Um, so I'm going to be sharing on that a lot. Um, I'm going to develop a program which allows people to deal with trauma. How do you deal with trauma? My clients that come to me, they always tell me their biggest, darkest secret. And let me just tell you, this culture is rampant with sexual abuse, addiction, violence. Um, it's just, you know, so many people are dealing with so much trauma And it can be cleared easily. We can disconnect from these energies and claim the freedom of who we are. So that is my heart and my intention when I speak about these other paradigms that they have to come down and we have to step into our spiritual power. We have to. Um, The other thing is, is that I'm working on a new body of music because the music doesn't take any mind. You wouldn't have to subscribe to it. You would just hear it and the vibration would then have an activation for whatever, whoever my tribe is, whoever is vibing with me, whoever feels aligned or is listening to my voice, who's like feeling, yes, if you don't feel that, then you should go far away and find someone else. Like, please, like it's, there's so many people in so many different energies, you know, on the planet that you should be aligned with only that which truly resonates with who you are. Mm. And so I have no attachment to, um, no opinion about anything other than, I am fulfilling my life mission, and now that I have a lot of things sort of in play, and you know, you're launching into your next amazing expression, and all the amazing work that you've done, babe, over these years, it's really extraordinary. It's just extraordinary, and I know because I read all the letters that you guys send it, send into him, and it's it's been an extraordinary light and lantern for so many people, and so thank you for everything that you've done. I appreciate that. And, and, and like I said, at the outset, it's been amazing to watch you kind of bloom, blossom and, and grow. And we've been talking for, you know, I don't know, an hour and 15, 20 minutes. And we haven't talked at all about you being a vegan chef or vegan cheese or any of the things that, that people traditionally know, you know, about you or when they think about you, that's what they, that's the association. Like you're really kind of, that's a that's a part of who you are, but the real essence of who you are, I think, is is what you've conveyed today. Yeah, it's it's uh it's it's been again like a rebirth. I'm sort of collecting other aspects of my of my life form, and 
one thing that I'm really excited about is that I've stepped into a collective uh, with some extraordinary artists who are all very, very developed fashion designers. And I can't really speak about it right now, except I have a vision for a future couture um, movement. And, uh, and so I've been in, you know, in process, that's one of the big things that's been coming through. And it's a, it's a relief. It feels like water to my cells. Um, some of you may not know, but I was a fashion designer and had my own collection, my own hundred piece collection for quite a few years. And, uh, it's, it's just in my blood. It's who, it's who I am. And I always, um, talk about searching for Sugarman when they find Rodrigo and, uh, He's painting houses. Rodriguez. Yeah, Rodriguez, Rodriguez. sorry. Uh-huh. And he's painting houses, but he's dressed like Bob Dylan. I'm like, oh, he's dude. Like dressed I'm like, like a rock star. Yeah, I'm like, dude, that's my dude, like for sure. So again, it's like in this spiritual exploration, it's it's uh, embodying our life is about cherishing and honoring every part of your personality. And that's a per- part of my personality that I love and adore. I love it. And these other artists, friends of mine, they, they love and adore fashion as well. And so- Uh, so that's been a super exciting opportunity because fashion has the, the potential to shift culture. And so I've got some really cool ideas and they've got some really cool ideas and energetics on how we could do that. And it feels awesome to be in a club with three people that I adore so completely as these three individuals. Mm -hmm. So there'll be more about that, but it's been, oh, and the other thing that's crazy is that our daughter Mathis is starting art school next week. And so we're going to be commuting uh, east of downtown and one of us staying downtown with her in a loft for yeah, half life the is, time. Life is going to change. Yeah. Um, but as a, as a part of that, and Tyler, my son was telling me, you know, mom, it's going to be great because it's going to reignite all your art, your artistic, you know, expression. And I used to draw and sculpt and paint and haven't been doing that for quite a while. So I actually pulled out my drawings from under my bed and Math has helped me edit it. And I'm just feeling so alive in every single aspect of my being, but don't worry. We, we are launching cheese that is coming. So uh, so stay tuned with that. But anyway, it's a, it's a glorious time to be alive and I'm super happy to be here and to be your beloved partner, uh, from afar, from afar, as you're in the well, tent from, from and afar. I'm in you're the two feet master. across from me right now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we gotta, we gotta wind this down. Um, parting words for the person who still suffers. Uh, what I would say, parting words, and, and the thing that I, if I can do anything in my expression in this life, it is to provide the possibility of another way, the possibility of another perspective. And what I would say, no matter what you're struggling with, no matter what action has manifested in your life, be it addiction, be it you know anything, uh, uh, abuse, sexual abuse, any imbalance that has been plaguing you. Uh, I would just tell you that I am holding the vision of your purest essence for you and understand that your action is not you. Many times we are processing these uh, attributes for our ancestral lines, and a lot of it is hereditary. Some of it is core foundational to who you are as a being. But I would just say that uh, you are a divine, precious expression of consciousness. And I will hold you in that vision until uh, you can feel it for yourself. And is there anything that that person can do in the meantime? Um, I think it's the relief. I think the recognition, it's a recognition of knowing, of knowing that they are so much more than their experience. That was what, was what I was trying to offer I in gotcha. that statement. Yeah. All right. Well, pleasure to spend a couple hours with you. Beautiful to be on the RRP. Love you, babe. Uh, if you guys are are digging on Julie, aka Srimati, you can find her at Srimati on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Srimati.com is your website. Divine Through Line is the podcast. Uh, your email. You sure you gave your email address out? You're going to get a bunch of emails at Srimati Music. Uh, Srimati Music at gmail.com. Yeah, it's good. Cool. It's best. All right. You want to take us out? Okay. Namaste. Peace.